Hi everyone. You know what? Eugene is the guy from Code Chef, and he does homework all the time. So he's a huge moron. Uh, but he's an even bigger moron because his teacher gives him homework, and he can't even do that. So that's all he does, and he still can't do that. So uh, this is a problem from the February 17 challenge, long challenge. Yeah, and uh, they gave us some really interesting variables to work with. There was a, and then there was n, which is quite rare as a variable. M and the most rare variable ever X X mod M is what you need to calculate so I don't know why they went through this but yeah basically you have been given three numbers A and uh, A N M you need to calculate by yourself what X is and then this final result right a formal definition of this problem is going to be A is a number is in any positive integer uh, between 0 to infinity n is another number between 0 to infinity x is a number which is defined like this you take a as a string right a as a string and you append a to it again and again and again n times so that's what you're doing you're just going to keep doing this n times. This will give you a string x, which is actually a number. So you take this number then and you modulo it with m. m is again another integer, uh, not necessarily prime, but yeah, it's an integer from 1 to infinity, let's say. Yeah. Greater than or equal to 2, and then for all our purposes, we, we have any integer is okay. So this is the problem. How do we solve it? So the first important observation is that you have this uh, number, let's say 78, and if, if you are appending 78 to 78 as strings, so that'll be 78, 78, 78, 78 actually, uh, and that's your result, but your result is actually nothing but 7800 plus 78, which in turn is equal to 10 raised to the power 2 into 78 plus 78 and here you see an interesting uh, relation 2 is actually equal to the length of 78 as a string all right so uh, for any general number a you will be multiplying it into 10 raised to the power the length of a plus a for the when you're appending it to itself the very first time and let's call this result the next time that you're doing this so that is 78 78 78 what you're basically doing is 78 78 0 0 plus 78 so that is result into 10 raised to the power length of a plus a is your new result so this is how your uh, you can iteratively find out the solution. If you try this though, uh, this solution is a little too slow. The problem being that every time you are multiplying into 10 raised to the power length of a, you, you can pre-compute this value, all right? But uh, your result will come after a long time. So n is potentially 10 raised to the power 12. So 10 raised to the power 12 computations will be required if you are going to be uh, solving this way. So that's that's way too slow. And the key observation is to not think in linear fashions, but in exponential fashion. So instead of 78, 78 and 78, what we are going to be thinking about is adding another 78 here and then checking, what if I had this result? So 78, 78 was something that you had. Uh, then your new result would be the old result into 10 raised to the power the length of the old result, which is for now, I mean, in the equation, it is still result, uh, plus result. And for consistency, I'll just write it R E S. Yeah. So how fast are we going now? Pretty fast. We are going at an exponential rate. Uh, the next value that we need to compute will be actually double this size. So that will be, this is of size eight. 
the next one will be of size 16. So I'll just write it down because it looks pretty fun. Yeah. So at this space, you're going to hit n, which is 10 raised to power 12, in just log n time. Because you're exponentially increasing the uh, size of the result that you're finding out. Now, of course, if you use this sort of calculation on primitive integers, uh, it's going to be fun. Uh, the answer is going to be wrong because it's going to overflow. But big integers, nothing is going to work here. Uh, the same factor is actually taking modulo. So the answer that you need to give us modulo n. So that's what we're going to be doing here. We're going to be taking this entire thing and modding it with n. And because uh, that's, that's the requirement. Now, instead of doing this dumb calculation, what we can do is mod m with everything else. So the result can be mod with m, then multiplied by 10 into length of result, modulo m. We get to this part. This part is pretty fancy and nice. And then result mod m is already here. So yeah. Then you can mod the entire thing with m. And so your result will keep on changing uh, till you realize that uh, length of result is sufficiently large. Now, when you are modulo with m, that time you just can't take length of result in a very uh, naive way because the, the length of result will be uh, constrained by m. So this will be calculated using a function actually, or you can use a, a simple for loop and iteratively increase this length. So instead of passing it as a parameter, what you do now is you have length and on every iteration you do length plus equal to size of result. Hmm, this looks like some recursion. <laughs> well, size of result not really. Uh, it's going to be length is equal to length plus length. Because it just became twice its own length. Like shown here. So that will be in the for loop. Yeah. Okay, interesting. How fast is this solution? Extremely fast. It's logarithmic in time. So n into length of a, when that is equal to the size of uh, size of result, so that when that is equal to length, actually, then you're done. Then you know that uh, you're done. Yeah. But because length is increasing exponentially, you might actually overshoot, and there might be the point that length is greater than equal to n into length of a. In that case, uh, you need to do some focus focus with binary. You're finding out results iteratively, so you're getting new results every time. Uh, every time you get a result, a new result, you just store it over here. So that is result 0, result 1, result 2. These are the results at the respective iterations. And the size of this array is going to be around log of n into length of a. That's the size of the array because it can't be greater than that. We are going at exponential speed. Also, you'll need an array storing binary values of zeros and ones, again of the same size. And this will represent this entire number n into length of a in binary. So on and so forth. So iterate over these two arrays at the same time at index 0, whatever values here multiplied with the result over here. Whatever values here multiplied with this result. And so on till you get a, so it's a sum of the dot product. It's a dot product basically. And that is your final result which you can output. So the interesting part is over here. It's binary exponentiation and that will probably explain to you this entire procedure also. So uh, I'll just get some real estate. Right, so this is what we are looking at. 10 is to the power a particular length mod m. So in fact, let's just uh, give it a better variable and imagine it a name like x. Right. 10 is to the power x mod m is what we need to calculate. How do we do that? Well, that is exactly equal to 10 is to the power x by 2 mod m into 10 is to the power x by 2 mod m, the entire thing modulo. M. This is the property of modulo. 
uh, you can just uh, the multiplications work and you can go on moduloing it infinite times and it won't change the result. So this property is pretty interesting. Another interesting thing to look at is any integer x can be represented as a binary number. So let's say that is 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. And in binary we know that because it's base 2, the first digit corresponds to 2 raised to the power 0, 2 raised to the power 1, 2 raised to the power 2. If you want the original number back, in, uh, then you just need to uh, take a dot product of these two vectors. Right, and simply put, uh, you have this number and to get it, you are taking a dot product. Instead, what we are going to do is we are going to calculate all values 10 raised to the power 1, 10 raised to the power 2, power 4, power 8, so on till 10 raised to the power ceiling of log of x. And this is just a mathematical trickery. Uh, the reason this works is because you go to x, you find out if the index, if, if the bit at that index is equal to 1. If it is, then you multiply your result by whatever value you have stored at that respective index. So this is 4, 0, 1, 2, 3. The fourth will be 10 raised to the power 16. So these are the indexes. And your result will need to be multiplied by 10 raised to the power 16. Also by 10 raised to the power 8. By 10 raised to the power 2. Unless I'm mistaken. No, I'm not mistaken. And 10 raised to the power 1. And uh, of course, these values are very, uh, very small because you have modulo m with each one. So yeah, that's it. Binary exponentiation is going to solve this problem for you. Uh, yeah. So that's it. Eugene and the big number is solved. In case you want notifications for further videos, please subscribe. Uh, if you have any suggestions or doubts, you can leave them in the comments below. I'll also be sharing all relevant links in the description. If you have any suggestions for any data structure or some AI technique, I'll always be interested. So until next time, thank you.